Hi, this is Hi Bob Poor Bob, and we're about to play some Ultimate General Civil War. Hello, and welcome back. Today, we're going to be playing some Ultimate General Civil War. It's going to be the second run of Stone's River, and we are really changing it up today. I found some things out. I don't know if anybody else has figured this out or not, but I have found a way to get 25 units in in the first section of the battle. What you do is you get a unit that you don't want, like this rifle cab right here. You throw it into your first core. I'm going to call it first core. I know it's not actually first core there, but it is my first core. Let's go. First core. First core. Because I'm tired. This is like junk core. Junk core. Core. There we go. Why did I... I can't spell. Okay. And second core. Second core. Okay. And... Third core. And other junk core. Junk E core. Okay, there we go. So, first core. Get a unit that you don't like. Throw it in there, somewhere, anywhere, it doesn't matter. First division, second division, third division, fourth division, it doesn't matter where it is. Then, in your third core that's going in, just load it up with units. So, you're going to get these six units in on the first section of the battle. So have these be units that you want in the first section of the battle. I want my 20 pound parrots. I want some extra infantry. Sounds good. And that's all you have to do. And be sure and load out this entire core because you'll get the entire core, all 24 units. Stones River. So you go first, second, and third and start so we are going to set up and I will be back when we're done setting up okay so we've got it all set up now we've got all our units down here four snipers uh, the we are gonna get an extra general so we're gonna go ahead and throw a general down here along with the supply wagon we've got Two units here that are going to hold here. We got these two units that we're going to move down. And we've got these three units that will hold along here, along with the four units that will spawn in up here. So that is our setup. Let's hit start. Okay. And as you can see, the first division of our third core came in. So we're going to set everybody up to moving. And that is pretty much the end of this little intro. So I am going to go ahead and do the commentary afterwards this time. So I will talk to you as I play. You guys have a good one, and I will see you there. So here we are to kick it off. Okay, so we are looking to do a couple things in this first section. Number one is to defend against their any push they might have, because sometimes they'll push. You just never know. You just have to get lucky if you don't have enough men to defend the push. The second is that we need to destroy all of their artillery, period. Like that is the most important thing because the artillery is what will do damage to us over time everything else we can avoid by just avoiding it yes I'm gonna go ahead and cheat just a little bit here I think I think I broke out an extra set of skirmishers that's fine it's not that big not that many not that much of a difference so we have our two 20 pound parrots that will rain down on these guys and try to get them wiped out we did get an extra shot there, an extra couple damage. 
So we get these guys set back up and in place. Now we have to come back down here and get these guys moving. So the reason why I'm moving my general like that is I'm actually looking for something very specific. I wanted to get a capture on a supply wagon because they will chase after that supply wagon like it is crack. And there is a supply wagon that sits right there. You see that at the top of the screen. Every single game, it sits there. And if you can get a hold of it and send it back to the north, their men will just run to the north. Just straight up, just run to the north. And you can take huge advantage of that because they will just basically abandon this position next to this flag. And you can sit down here and then move up on them as you wish. You can also use your snipers a little bit better because once they get... So once they start leaving this area, they don't come back, and it allows you to start taking off some of their rear units. Their, uh, they will leave their artillery unsupported. So, see here, I'm getting them to chase after him, which is what I want, because once they chase after him, then he can get around them, hopefully, and get that supply wagon. That was the goal. Now, I, I'm not going to be able to do it this time, but it still distracts them. It still causes them to chase after him instead of doing what they should. And now I'm taking my other general to scout out over here and to keep vision on the far side of this point. The general has a bit of health. Not... They're obviously not unkillable, but they do have quite a bit more health than what you think they do if you think that they're pretty easily killable. And even if you lose them, they don't die. So I set both of these to run to try to get around from the south here. So we're looking at a pretty good start here. I was pretty happy that that uh, unit of infantry started running to the north after the um, general there, which is really helpful. And it just looks like they have completely cleared out down here. By bringing my general up there, they started moving units to the north. And once they start moving to the north, they just keep moving to the north for some reason. We're able to get some shots in on his general here. I think we're even able to kill it which is pretty cool to get a general knocked out this early on in the battle. I'm pretty excited about that. I struggle a little bit here to try to get the right one selected. It keeps changing. Okay, now we got it. So what we're looking at now is I see that they've almost completely abandoned that woods. Probably partially because I stepped out and shot their artillery out there. It really throws off their balance whenever you do that to them. They start moving forward to cover their artillery, and they move out of that forest, then you can move in behind them, and it can really, really do good work. So here I'm getting angled because that one unit actually did come back. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take my general over there, and I'm going to confuse him. So what you can do is if you get really close to somebody with a unit, Regardless of whether or not that unit can hurt them, they still want to turn around and fire at it rather than at the units that are right in front of them, but further away. So if you get in here, so we did take two, sh two volleys there, but then now, and I was also looking to get their uh, supply wagon too while I was at it. I was like, eh, I might as well get that too. See how they turned? Instead of firing now, they turned, and that allows me... And I missed the supply wagon just barely. Did take quite a bit of damage there. I shouldn't have gone for that supply wagon right at that moment. I should have waited for it, to be honest. It wasn't the brightest move I made in this battle. But overall, this battle goes really well. Okay, so we're moving in here. We got him kicked out because he rotated even further. And that allowed my snipers to actually get a rear shot on him instead of just flanking they actually got full rear shot so now what we're going to do is i play kind of a hybrid game this time 
I realize now. See, I see their artillery there, so I'm like, ooh, snipers. Let's let's go let's go take care of that. And these two snipers can keep this guy running for a long time by shooting him. Um, I play kind of a hybrid game. I mess up here. I should have kept these units moving forward some. Not enough to get seen, just enough to stay close enough to be relevant. That's all that I need right now. I need to stay relevant. And I pull these guys back because I had plans to move north in the second phase. And if you move north in the second phase, you have to have guys to the south or it will move on to the next one early like it did in my first run. And I did not want that to be happening again because that is super annoying. This guy, for some reason, is really confused about what he wants to do. He keeps turning in all sorts of directions. And we get some flanking fire on him here. And there's no way that he's going to be real happy about that. We are taking a few shots here that I'm not too excited about. But we needed to get in there to protect our snipers. Because there was a chance that they were going to try to turn around on us. And that could have been really painful. So now we keep moving our snipers forward. We go ahead and get our general back because he's done enough at this point. We are looking at some pretty low health totals on those uh, two units of artillery there. I, I realize a little bit too late that that unit is actually not the unit that goes with that unit. It's actually the other one. So I tried to put him back into that unit and he didn't, he tried to run to the other one. So what we're doing here is we just need two units to hold this. We don't need four units. But to get those units, we need to have a couple extra to begin with. Just because we're running the risk of getting overmatched by just the sheer number of units that he can put forward here if we're not real careful. So at first we just need the one unit to hold the tree line and the other unit to the side there is just there to keep units from getting around the edge and the one in the back is there to protect against any cavalry. So we did take a little bit of a shot there on that unit from cavalry. Nothing too crazy yet. The craziness comes later. I, I do make a few misplays from time to time, and they tend to get me burned a little bit. So I'm pointing out that there's an artillery unit there. So after this artillery unit, we're going to want to move forward and take care of that one. But of course, that's easier said than done because we've got to also take care of all of these cavalry over here too. We want to get them wiped out before the next phase. Doesn't quite happen, but we're real close. That's one of the things that makes this run really good is that I was able to mostly wipe out both the cavalry and the artillery relatively early on, which is pretty important in the grand scheme of things. You want to wipe out, I think we've wiped out three units of artillery so far in just the first little bit here so what you do is you have him stand in that tree line right there and he can take artillery hits all day long it's awesome that general right there saves me tons of men because all three artillery units that are in that woods up to the north there right in the center of the screen instead of firing at any of my actual units they fire at that general and whenever he's in woods like that he gets pretty good cover and he doesn't take all that much damage. So we're pushing forward, getting shots on a lot of these. We're looking to get shots on that artillery that's hiding in there. So we're about to take out our fourth unit of artillery if we can pull it off here. So I'm holding back all these guys. I should have moved them forward just a little bit. Not a lot. Just enough that I can use them if I need them without having to run them halfway across the map. I don't fully regret it because 
one thing really nice that happened because of it is that I was able to... Ooh, yeah, we're getting shots there by that artillery. And I'm like, ooh, maybe I can step forward and go ahead and shoot this artillery. He's unseen against that artillery. It's perfect. So we're feeling really good. So the, he opens fire on my general, but I open fire on him. And we all know how that goes. So that sniper is really precarious there. I'm really worried about him, but I feel that I need to take whatever shots I can while I can, because if I don't, I'm going to be in trouble in the long run. So their cavalry is mustering, and I'm pretty worried about them stacking up on me where I can't, I can't survive. But yeah, go ahead and actually move all the way into the forest there. So we're looking at snipers and our different units. We're pulling back since uh, we just fired at that infantry unit. We don't want to get into the cavalry and have them uh, try to charge us at this point. We're going to go ahead and take these two units and get a little bit more active after the uh, the uh, cavalry out there because we have an opportunity here to really do some good work if we can get into position fast enough get them trapped in a corner and get them all killed but we only have 35 minutes to do it so we're on a pretty tight clock at this point to try to get all these things done that we're trying to do so we have wiped out four artillery one two three four four artillery and about half of another one we are wiping out right now we're also taking shots at it with the um, the long distance guns as well so I decide that it's just too risky I should have done this earlier it's too risky to leave my snipers out here completely unsupported with a chance for the cavalry to come in on them and here we get got by cavalry they had the ability to fire they just didn't they were completely reloaded they had the opportunity to fire and they didn't and they didn't until I actually specifically ordered them to fire which is dumb they should have easily shot that cavalry I think it's because one cavalry got a little bit close and then suddenly they're like oh well I can't fire because that other one is kind of close but by that point that other one was running off there was no need for that so here I think that we wipe it out but we don't actually get it wiped out here I believe I believe that it still actually survives for a bit I'm a little bit disappointed in myself for allowing it to live but there's only so much you can do I'm a little bit upset that this that one that I'm moving forward only has 50% of his um, stamina and so I don't want to move him too much right now I really want to see see that unit of artillery disappears but we didn't actually get the kill I thought we did so I go ahead and pull back but we didn't get the kill we we did some really heavy damage probably two-thirds of it it probably had like 300 to begin with so we got it down to about a hundred which is good like we did good work on it but now we're looking at all these cavalry out here in the open and I'm just like oh we should I didn't want them to get pushed this way I want them to get pushed more to the north but we've already started our flanking move on them so there's no way they're gonna get into that pocket at this point which is fine it'll all work out in the end we'll, we'll get most of them wrapped up but we do get surprised by them a little bit here and there I'm not gonna lie the cavalry is really slippery in this game and I I get caught out once or twice I think by their cavalry and really take some take some hits I just I, I do wish that it, I was just a little bit faster on the uh, on the draw here later but overall we do a pretty good job of staying on top of most of their calf most of the time 
So we're looking to maybe get our snipers in a place where they can go ahead and fire instead. Our guy that's standing out there in the middle hasn't taken all that much damage still, so we're still looking pretty good on that front. We're starting to get him corralled in. We only have 16 minutes left. That means that we can step forward and take the objective if we want because it has a 17-minute countdown clock. I went ahead and moved my general forward there just to see if that would get him to back off. They backed off. I'm not sure if it's because of the general, but what I wanted happened, so I'm all good with that. Those two cav units are still a little bit too big. I would have preferred for them to be more like 300 instead of 4 and 500 but we just kind of have to deal with what we've got we don't have the ability to just nuke them in one hit whenever we don't have our units all together here we did take a little bit of a hit there not a bad one though we have taken a hit on that unit I'm not sure if it was right there or if it was earlier one way or another, we are still doing a pretty good job of keeping them all corralled here. All but those two. Actually, I get caught. Yeah, I, I definitely get caught twice by Cav that I did not expect. And uh, one of them was pretty painful, and the other one didn't bother me at all. I try to avoid it, but the truth is is that some things just don't matter and that's all you that's all you can say about that it's just not a big deal to lose a few men here and there to certain things okay so we are winding down on this first episode here just seven minutes to go until we uh take on over into the next area so we secured the center it has a 17 minute countdown clock that is mistake number uno right there i did not need to move in and take that shot I should have moved further to the north if i wanted to do that so whenever he turned my guy to the in the trees would get a shot but instead i just take a shot for basically no reason there and that is never a position that you want to be in you never want to let somebody take a shot on you without taking multiple shots on them. It's just, it's bad, bad move on my part. So I go ahead and tell them all to move forward and attack there. We go ahead and keep that guy there and he does okay in the end. But really, I could have played that a lot better than what I did. 